just as astute an observer of TV yes, talent as I am. And uh, I'm sure you're aware of the up-and-coming Jamie Martin and Adam Chandler, Jr. Two hot prospects, if I've ever seen them. My thoughts exactly. Now, WRCW needs uh, more children's programming, so I say we roll the cameras, put them on tape. What could be more natural than uh, a journal in progress, two PV kids recounting their great day in the Big Apple? Cool! Oh! Great pile of potential right there. You've been a tremendous souvenir. Okay. What do you think, guys? Come on, let's get moving. Yes. Get moving. All right. Whoa. Well, hey. A limo trip to New York and uh, meeting Spider-Man and uh, their own videotape. Oh, life is to be enjoyed. I'm, I'm getting a tremendous kick out of this. Have you not noticed? You're really terrific. Listen, Adam. I love them. I need some advice. Really? I'm honored. Uh, what? I need some help. How to tell Jamie and Junior about the Tad and Dixie's divorce. I'm sure that he's going to tell them when he gets back, but ah. I said... Liza. Liza. Hello. Uh, just one minute. I assume you've heard about the, um, sudden change in Ted's marital status. Yes, of course. Why do you ask? I was just wondering about the timing. Hmm? Was it before or after? You resigned with WRCW. Tad Martin's marital status has about as much to do with my career as that rock from Mars. Timing is everything. Yes, Adam, it is. As a matter of fact, I've been working a lot of years to try to make this network a major force in the industry. I look at all that as a vertical move. Well, you certainly helped put us on the TV map, Liza. There's no doubt about that. But WRCW to WRCW is a lateral move. It's not vertical. I was talking about perks and bonuses. Which is also quite lateral, as you well know. I would imagine that you'd be dying to jump out of this little puddle into a bigger pond somewhere. <laughs> Adam, the water is just fine here. Because there's an unhooked tadpole swimming in it? Tad and Dixie separated months ago. She's in West Virginia. I mean, the divorce is sort of a technicality at this point, isn't it? <clears throat> For whom? Brooke, wouldn't you say that the divorce is, was inevitable? I think probable is probably a better word. I don't think any of that matters either way. Both of these boys, Junior and Jamie, are going to have a hard time understanding it. Hmm. And there's a matter of venue. An American divorce would have delivered the same message, but why fly to the Caribbean for a rush job? Why, why are we having this? You know, really, you decide to do something, then you do it. I mean, why not, right? <laughs> well, nobody can accuse you of being sentimental. I am effective in all things, Adam. Yes, so it seems. <laughs> and I'm sure Tad, by this point, is a bachelor, even as we speak, and is free to chase after whomever he wants now. But it still brings me back to the same question. Why? Does he want his freedom at this particular moment? Be a better judge, of course, Brooke. Don't you think that Tad might have opted for a quick divorce for the children's sake? I mean, no more waiting. No more empty hopes for reconciliation. I don't know. It's food for thought, don't you think? <clears throat> you know, Jamie's had dreams about Dixie coming back. So is Junior. It's funny, it's hard to try and explain the idea of divorce. I mean, no matter how you, how you explain it, I mean, kids don't get it. Not for a long time. I mean, I tried before to help Jamie understand it, and he was very young. It was when Tad and I first divorced, and it began... It just makes me feel like he feels nothing ever lasts, and I'm glad that you're around for him. Growing up's hard enough without a constantly changing cast. Oh, we did! You got it? Yeah. That's great. Listen, it's been a long day. I think we should head home. Oh, it was a great day. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you again, Adam. Oh, yeah. My pleasure. I'll uh, see you in the morning, AJ. You too, Jamie. Give me five there. Give me five. <laughs> okay. Liza. Um, listen, would you like to join us for dinner? Oh, I'd like nothing better. But, um... Unfortunately, we've got a mountain of work to do. I'm sure we're going to have to 
work late and just order in. Oh. Okay, well, uh, maybe another time. Uh, AJ, you enjoy your sleepover. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, I've got a great idea. Why don't you guys come over to my place tomorrow night and we'll camp out? Yes. Like we talked about on the way home from New York? Can we pitch tents and have sleeping bags? Sure. We can be safe and sound and near running water. Yay! <laughs> okay? Okay. All right. Thanks again, Adam. It really was a wonderful day. Yeah. Good night. Come on, you guys. Let's go. Are you pooped? Well, uh, do you have that, uh, the tape? What was the tape we were looking for? The, uh, retrospective? You know you're amazing. You're really, really amazing. <laughs> oh, it is thrilling to watch a master at work. You dangle the bait, you play the line, and then you reeled it in. Patience. My father always said that was so important. That and a great deal of discipline, of course. What are you chattering about? You would sell your soul to have a few hours with her. You would cancel TCE if that's what it took. But you're not. You're actually taking yourself out of the game. I am so impressed. We have work to do here. We have the November sweeps to chart. Yes, but you have finesse and restraint. I mean, you just sort of inch your way into that motherhood thing. Mama Brooke was impressed and appreciative of Uber Daddy's constant sort of source of detail and genuine caring. It is genuine. I don't use children. Adam, it was a strategy to be all strategies. It separates the amateurs from the pros. Here is the cold and calculating Adam Chandler, who's actually putting aside his desires for Brooke, and he's turning her down, thus becoming unavailable, hard to get. It's brilliant. The uh, campout's been canceled, uh, according to uh, on a kind of wild beast. <laughs> did you did you just check in with the campers recently? Uh, yes, the campsite has been moved indoors because uh, one of the boys heard a coyote. Jamie, mother's instinct. Well, Tad said he knows about the divorce and he seemed to take it fairly well, but you know. Yeah, divorce is a cinch, but it's those pesky coyotes. Is it okay if I stop by on my way home? Today? No, it's under control, Andrew. No. no. You stay. You have fun. I can take care of the pesky coyote. I have to be there to light the fireplace anyway. Uh, Junior's got me signed up for marshmallow duty. Well, what about Sky? I had no idea it was a party for her. So Stuart passed it off as a, as a, as a, what, a, a gallery reception. Well, I'm gonna tell Aunt Phoebe, all right? Do, do you think you could get a ride home maybe with Stuart or, or Edmund or someone? Come here with a date and go home with Brooke. Why aren't you cool? A little nonchalance goes a long way. Yeah, two steps forward, one step back. Great distances can be spanned by taking little baby steps. A family evening with Adam. No, I am stopping by to check in on Jamie, and don't give me another Adam lecture, please. Oh, oh how I wish this reception had been for Pierce. <clears throat> You're not leaving, too. Um, the boys are at my house tonight. Um, well, well, can't Winifred look after them or, or Naomi? Well, I promised Junior that I'd come back Junior. and attend the marshmallow roast. Of course. The golden boy. But well, he's only here for a few days, Scott. You know, you know, they're right when they say that blondes have more fun. Yes, yes. They do, and even their parents love them more. Sky, don't be ridiculous. You know, if this were Haley's night, you'd schmooze till dawn. But since it's only me, why bother? That's absurd. It's no, I should feel grateful that you showed it all. I'm sorry that there's no artist for you to meet. Some unknown painter raised your attention, but your firstborn daughter, no way. If I had known this party was for you, you I would have planned to... out of town. Scott, you couldn't be more wrong. Or more inconvenient. Forgotten daughter, back from the past. I love you, Sky. At a distance, maybe. Up close, I'm annoying and a fool. Few welcome homes and I'm warm all over. As if anybody gives a damn if I live or die. Sky. Sky. Well, go, go after her. No, it won't do any good. It'll just make it worse. Do you want me to go? I can talk to her. No, there's nothing to do until she calms down.